Star Citizen is one of the most compelling games in modern history. However, effectively navigating the Pledge Store is complicated enough that it can be considered a game on its own. Today, I'd like to show how you can maximize the value of your pledges by getting steep discounts on each new ship you purchase. Welcome to the Ultimate CCU Chaining Guide. First and foremost, I want to stress that you do not need to buy ships with real money in the pledge store in order to use them in-game. All ships either already are, or will eventually be available for purchase in-game using the credits you earn from playing. If you are new to Star Citizen, this statement might have you wondering why some people decide to purchase their fleet instead of earning it in-game. A few of the most common reasons include Number 1. To jumpstart progression Each ship has unique abilities that can enable different gameplay loops. These specializations facilitate various activities such as mining, bounty hunting, cargo hauling, or trading to name only a few. By purchasing these ships with real money, different professions are immediately available, directly after server wipes and at the 1.0 launch of the game. This is especially relevant for people with limited time, such as busy professionals or those with kids, who don't want to spend what little time they have grinding to get to their favorite ship or gameplay loop. Having their ship purchased can allow them to more quickly jump into their favorite activity, spending their time doing what they love. Additionally, some Star Citizen enthusiasts prefer to start with ships that have a much higher earning potential. This allows them to earn down by using the credits they make in-game to more quickly purchase the other ships they'd like to have in their fleet. Number 2. Extended or Lifetime Insurance By default, ships you purchase in-game will not come with insurance. These ships will incur an added operational cost for insurance or will be at risk of permanent loss upon theft or destruction. Ships purchased with real money often come with either many year or lifetime insurance. This means that in the event the ship is lost, the hull will remain available on the account and can be reacquired for only the cost of the insurance deductible. Do note that additional insurance may still be required to cover any upgrades added to the ship such as mining heads, server blades, or guns. Number 3. To support the project. Following the development of the game is a passion project for many. Financially supporting Star Citizen is the way some community members like to ensure the longevity of the game. Just remember, it is not any one person's responsibility to single-handedly fund the development of the game. Please be responsible and only spend within your means. Ships can be purchased from the Roberts Space Industries website under the Pledge Store option. There are a few different ways of gaining ships on the Pledge Store. Number one, ships with the game package. A game package is what allows citizens to sign into the verse. Game packages are acquired as an add-on to the first ship a citizen buys. There has been some speculation that additional game packages may allow an individual to have an alternate character or give them an NPC to help automate certain roles on their ship. However, this has not been confirmed and is subject to change. Game packages typically add an additional $15 to $20 to the cost of a ship, so it's currently not recommended to have more than one. Number 2. Standalone Ships These are additional ships that citizens can buy to expand their fleet, but that do not contain a game package. And number three, cross-chassis upgrades, or CCUs. A CCU is an item that reserves the ability to migrate from one ship hull to another. CCUs allow a citizen to only pay the difference between the ship they have and the ship they want. Quick note, CCUs are not automatically applied. The strategy about when and how to do this will be discussed later in the guide. In addition to the different ways of buying ships, the Pledge Store also has a few terms and oddities that should be mentioned. First, limited time availability. Most ships and upgrades are not available to purchase year-round. Instead, these ships can only be purchased a few days a year. These days typically occur during big in-game events that are accompanied by a Pledge Store sale. Next, limited hull availability. Some ships sold during Pledge Store sales are done so in limited quantities. This means once the allocation of these ships has been exhausted, no more will be available until the next time they go on sale. And lastly, War Bond Sales. Some ships and upgrades are granted a discount if purchased with new money, or, put differently, are not bought using store credit. 
these are called War Bond purchases and are the basis for achieving the largest savings when shopping on the Pledge Store. There is no limit to the number of times a ship can be upgraded using CCUs. Applying multiple CCUs is called CCU chaining. By purchasing a succession of War Bond CCUs, you can stack the savings, ultimately reducing the final price of the desired ship significantly. To maximize the gains from CCU chaining, we will follow a few basic guidelines. Number one, pick the base chassis carefully. The starting chassis will determine the initial value of the CCU chain. The lower the starting value, the more opportunity there will be for savings. The items and attributes that accompany the hull. This includes things like game packages, hangar flare, and insurance. Finally, the base chassis will determine if the ship can be melted or gifted. Generally speaking, it is best to start CCU chains with an LTI token. An LTI token is a low-cost ship purchased during a concept sale, so it has lifetime insurance. Number two, use the smallest increments possible for each upgrade. Each step in a CCU chain is a chance to add another discount. To maximize the savings, it is best to buy upgrades in the smallest increments possible. Number three, pay close attention to concept sales. Concept shipped CCUs are valuable because they often increase in value throughout the ship's development and at its release. Additionally, concept sales on standalone ships typically have lifetime insurance. A low-cost standalone concept ship is often a perfect LTI token you can use for your CCU chain's base hull. Number four, when picking which ship to upgrade from, avoid including limited hull ships like the Constellation Phoenix in your CCU chain. These often aren't available as CCUs. Even when they are available as CCUs, they are incredibly competitive to acquire and often won't have any warbound discount. Number five, each upgrade must increase the value of the hull. This means we are unable to add any CCUs that overlap in value with another CCU already in the chain. Which brings us to number six. Don't be afraid to replace CCUs in your chain if a better offer comes along. Individual CCUs are often low cost, and the store credit can be used to link small gaps in the chain. Let's apply these guidelines to a practical example. To demonstrate, let's say we have decided to buy the $260 Mercury Star Runner. To get the best value, we will be looking at purchasing any Warbond CCUs that are below the value of the desired ship. Due to the requirement for CCUs to continually increase in value, we will use a spreadsheet to make sure any upgrades we buy don't overlap with other CCUs. A link to the spreadsheet template used in this demonstration will be in the description below. We will start in the bottom cell of the spreadsheet. Here, we will populate the ship's name and value. In this case, Mercury Star Runner and $260. Next, we will see if we have any ships that we would like to use as the base hole for our chain. Knowing the starting and ending ship for our chain will give us a value range our CCUs must fall between. Let's use the $35 Argo MPUV-1C with LTI that we recently got for free as a referral bonus. If you haven't claimed this free LTI token, check out my video linked in the corner for more information. Similar to our target ship, we will record the name and value in the spreadsheet, this time in the first cell. At this point, we must wait patiently for the various events where Warbond upgrades will be on offer. The first event that occurs is Stella Fortuna. At this time, there is a Warbond Tumbril Cyclone, valued at $75, with a Warbond offer for $65. To determine if this CCU will work in our chain, we must first select which ship we are going to upgrade the Tumbril MT from. We could go directly from our MPUV1C, spending $30. However, this wouldn't maximize our chances for adding more discounts later. Instead, we will click All Ships on the CCU Upgrade tool and pick the very next cheapest ship, the 300i, valued at $60. Because we only pay the difference between the $60 300i and the $65 Warbond Cyclone MT, this CCU will only cost us $5. However, once the CCU is applied, the Tumble Cyclone MT will be worth $75 giving us $10 of value towards our target ship for free. Or put differently, this Warbond CCU grants us a $10 discount. Furthermore, the 300i is a good choice because if this ship ever gets a Warbond sale in the future, at that point, we can add that discount to our chain. Finally, 
the 300i is always available. So if we did want to finish our chain and apply our upgrades, we could do so without having to wait for the ship to go on sale. After this CCU is purchased, we will add this link in the chain to our spreadsheet. The next sale is the Invictus launch week. During this event, there are a few different Warbond sales available throughout the week. The first Warbond ship on offer is a Polaris for $700 instead of $750. While this would be a $50 discount, this ship is too expensive and is therefore outside the price range for CCUs that can be used for upgrading to the MSR. The second ship that gets a Warbond offering is an Origin 325A light fighter for $60 instead of $70. This unfortunately overlaps with our Tumble MT CCU and would violate the ever increasing in value restriction for applying CCUs. For these reasons, we must pass on the first two CCUs. However, the third Warbond ship available is an Ares Inferno. Normally valued at $220, the Inferno is available with a Warbond discount for $200. If we upgrade from an Anvil Hurricane valued at $195, we can get $25 of value added towards our MSR, only costing us five. Next, we will grab a CCU for a 100i valued at $50, but on Warbond for $45. We will select the upgrade from a Ranger TR, costing us $5. Finally, we will pick up a Nova tank valued at $120, but Warbond priced at $105. This will be upgrading from a $100 Cutlass Black, again, only costing us $5, but giving us $15 of free value. The last event in this example is the biggest ship sale of the year, the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, or IAE for short. For starters, the Ares Inferno becomes a flyable ship. This release has increased the value of our CCU by $30, which means it is now worth $250 instead of $220. During the sale, we are also able to pick up the following additions to our CCU chain. A Gladius, valued at $90 for $80 Warbond upgrading from our Tumbrel MT for $5 new money. A Gladiator, valued at $165 for a Warbond price of $150, from a Razor for only $5. A Freelancer Dur, valued at $135 for $125 Warbond, for $5 when upgrading from the Nova. And an Anvil Hurricane, valued at $195 for $185 Warbond, from our Gladiator for $20. And finally, a 300i valued at $60 for $55 Warbond, from our 100i also costing us only $5. To finish up our chain, we will use store credits to close any gaps that are too small to use Warbond CCUs for. During the IAE, there was also a sale for a Cutlass Black valued at $100, but available for $90 on Warbond. However, because the $90 is the same price as our Gladius, we cannot purchase this Warbond sale. However, we can use our store credits to pick up the non-Warbond CCU, taking us one step closer to finishing the chain. While this purchase with store credits doesn't reduce the final cost of the MSR, it is still better than the alternative of upgrading directly from the Gladius to the Nova tank. Not only would this have required foresight, knowing which ships CIG would put up for sale, it also would have required us to spend more new money on the Warbond purchase to cover the larger gap between the two ships. By using the Cutlass Black as a stepping stone, we are also able to use any store credits we may already have on our account, such as those acquired when we referred ourselves to get the Argo MPUV. In addition to the Cutlass Black, we will also use $5 of store credit to get the CCU from the Argo MPUV 1C to the Ranger TR. This will ensure we don't need to pay more money when the price is increased for its release. Next, we will close our last gap using $10 of store credit to go from the Freelancer Dur to the Razor. Lastly, we will use store credits to buy the CCU to our target ship, the Mercury Star Runner. This will cost us $10 in store credits, bringing the final value to $260. All said and done, we have spent a total of $95, $35 in store credit, and $60 in new money. By chaining Warbond CCUs, we were able to save a whopping $165 off of a $260 ship. This ends up being just short of a 65% discount. While this example is completely fictitious, outlining a best case scenario, with enough dedication, patience, and luck, it is not unreasonable to expect discounts between 25 and 50% from most CCU chains. Finally, while the pledge store does only allow you to purchase one CCU at a time, this process can be used to work towards multiple different ships concurrently to multiply your savings. 
Doing so can save hundreds or even thousands of dollars throughout all of your purchases on the Pledge Store. Generally speaking, it is best to wait as long as possible before applying any purchased CCUs. This is because the game is still in alpha and new ships are frequently being added to the game, both in concept and flyable status. Each one of these releases grants new opportunities to get better discounts. Additionally, as these new ships and gameplay loops are added to the game, both what you enjoy doing and which ships are best for the job may change. By not applying your CCUs, you retain the maximum flexibility for altering the composition of your fleet. This may be especially useful if you are ever uncertain about which ship or variant you might want. In this case, you can pick up CCUs for both ships, buying additional time for new information to become available that may help with the process of making a decision. The only exception for when it might make sense for someone to apply their CCU chain is if they are 100% certain they want a ship and they can't wait to use that ship or its loaners in the PU. While this does prevent you from receiving any future discounts from Warbond CCUs below the value of the highest applied CCU, you can still upgrade this ship further, receiving additional discounts if you do change your mind at a later date. Also, try to avoid buying ships in packages. While this may seem like a good deal at first glance, when compared to CCU chaining, they are universally more expensive. Additionally, ships in a pack can't be melted or gifted individually, which significantly complicates managing these ships on your account. Finally, any digital good purchased on the Pledge Store can be exchanged or melted to reclaim store credit. However, be aware of some common gotchas. Melting a ship only ever gives you back the value you put into the ship, not the current value of the ship. This means that additional value gained due to warbond purchases or ship releases will be lost. Additionally, while the base ship will be available for repurchase from your buyback queue, any CCUs that had been applied are permanently lost. This means if you ever do decide you want the melted ship again, you will need to create a new CCU chain from scratch. For this reason, it is typically better to continue upgrading to a ship you do want instead of melting back into store credit. Unlike when melting a ship with an applied CCU, if you melt a CCU before applying it, the CCU will be available in your buyback. However, the buyback price for CCUs are not guaranteed and may change. This means, if the ship you are upgrading from increases in value, the buyback CCU can be more expensive than buying a new CCU. Additionally, if the ship you are upgrading to increases in value, the cost for the buyback CCU may also increase in value. You can repurchase any number of digital items from your buyback as long as you are using new money. However, store credit may only be used to repurchase an item once every 90 days. Do bear in mind that just like standalone ships purchased with store credit, ships purchased from your buyback with store credit cannot be gifted. If you do plan on gifting this ship, it is best to buy it with new money. Any CCUs purchased using store credit, either from buyback or new from the pledge store, do not affect a hull's ability to be gifted. If you ever do decide you have too much store credit and want to gift a ship to a friend or sell it on the gray market, using store credit CCUs can be an effective way of moving this value from one account to another. I know this video has been a long one, so thank you to anyone that has made it this far. If you have found this video useful and would like to help the channel grow, please hit the like and subscribe button. Also, if you know of any tips that I missed, would like any personalized help, or are planning on doing some CCU chaining yourself, please drop a comment below. I do read each one and will do my best to respond. Thank you for watching and catch you guys in the verse.